guys, my name is Rachel. I am a spin instructor at Epic Ride. Um, I usually teach spin on a bike, but now I'm going to be teaching you a do-yourself at home bar class. It's around 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Um, this is Brody, my Brody's mountain dog, and uh, Kingsley, my great Dane puppy. <laughs> I'm going to probably have to put them away because they will climb all over me if you try to do anything at home with a workout class. Dogs just do not want to be alone. Um, so give you an idea of what our class will be. We are going to start with that core, really like warming up those stabilizing muscles, and then we're going to work down into our glutes, then we're going to go right into our legs, and we're going to finish with that upper body. So for our upper body, you can use any kind of like equal rounded weighted object you find in your apartment, house, whatever. Um, I'm using a can of chickpeas. and. You just gotta use what you can find. And if you have any of those exercise balls, it's always a great thing for stabilizing, like being behind your lower back for core work, in between your legs for arm work. I totally welcome you to use it. I had one, but he ate it. <laughs> so I don't have one anymore. But we're gonna start with a warm up real quick. I'm gonna put these guys away because they will not leave me alone. And then we'll get started. All right, we are gonna get started right in that warm up. So for our warm up, we're gonna go into squats first. So some people can go down like super low and that's awesome. Um, I personally can't, but when we go into that squat position, you wanna make sure that those knees aren't going all the way over your toes, but they're like a little bit back and that booty is sticking like all the way out. Straight line from those shoulders, to the head, shoulders, tailbone, that straight line, core is in nice and tight. Hips are tucked in so you're not like arching and sticking that butt out. And that's how you come into that perfect squat. So we're just gonna do 20 of those. So really just getting that heart rate going. Alright, 12, 13, 13, 5 more, 4, 3, 2, and one, coming straight up, hinging from those hips, coming right down into that perfect plank pose. So for our plank pose, you can either be on your hands or on your forearms. It doesn't matter if you have really sensitive wrists or wrist issues. I would recommend going down onto those elbows, forearms, but, and you can switch it off because we're gonna do two of these. So in that perfect plank position, you know, kneecaps up, straight line, holding that core in tight giving yourself a little bit in those elbows and pushing through on that upper back. So just holding right here, 10 more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. We're going into those hip dips. So we're gonna just tilt a little, one on each side, two, we're doing 10, three, four, Almost there. Nine and ten. And we're gonna do a little bit of a seesaw going forward and back. Two. It's really warm up uh, real quick. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. You got three, two, and one. Hold here, 20 second hold. I know it burns. Feel myself shaking. <laughs> Less than 10. You got five, four, three, two, and one, lightly down to those knees, bring it all the way back, child pose. Melting right into it. Give yourself two breaths here, breathing in. Second breath, breathing in. Let it all go. All right, we're going to that second step for a warm up, right back into those squats. There is an option if you want to lift up on those toes when you come up. So we got one, two, if you're not gonna fall over. <laughs> Three, four, five. Try to really activate those forearms and those triceps by pushing back really tight with purpose, not just kind of letting your arms hang, but real tight. You got eight. Nine. 
We got four, three, two, and one. Bring it all the way down, back into that plank pose. Second set. So for this plank, I'm gonna do my forearms this time. I'm gonna hold for 20 seconds. Through this, we're gonna do mountain climbers, 20 on each side. Got 10, eight, six, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna go each side. So we got one, two, three, Add 10, 11, 12, 13. Try not to go too high with that butt. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Coming right into that pose. 20 forward and back. That seesaw. Halfway there. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Down to those knees, into that child pose. Two big breaths, breathing in and out, and in and out. So that was our warm up. Now we're gonna go straight into that core work. So for our core work, we're going to start with a standard crunch, then we're going to work our way up with our legs up, 90 degrees, and then up all the way, and kind of do a set like that. So coming down into that crunch position, you want to push down on those hips, make sure that those hips are pushed up and that lower back is always on the ground. If you ever feel at any point your body rocking and that lower back lifting, really want you to either push yourself up less or move those legs less depending on what position we're in and really focus on pushing down that lower back. That is the hardest part about core work is remembering that because sometimes we use other things and it compensates for it and then we get injuries. So in that perfect plank position, arms are nice and wide. We're just gonna go up 20 times. Let's go one, two, Almost there. Breathing out when we lift. Less than 10. We're at six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold up right here as high as you can. Hands are nice and light still. Looking straight up, not crunching in that neck. Just pulse for 20 pulses. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Breathing out. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19, 20. Just hold. Just hold 20 seconds. You got 15 seconds left. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, almost there. Two, and one, bring it on down. Now we're gonna bring up those legs 90 degrees. So I'm probably gonna mess this up because it's just, it's so hard to do. But you wanna keep those knees 90 degrees. You wanna avoid having them coming too far forward, parallel right over those hips. And we're just gonna do a standard crunch for now with our legs in this 90 degree angle. Pointer flex those toes, try not to do anything in between. I'm gonna flex mine because I have sensitive hips. So we're gonna go one, 20 of these right here. Halfway there, 10, 11. to come down to that mat or hold up right there and we're just going to bring those feet down and up 
Now, if you feel your lower back really lifting up like I do, I'm not going to go all the way down and hit that floor. I'm just going to do a nice, light rock. We're going to do 20 of these. Ten more. We got a nine, eight. You got five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it on up. Now we're going to combine that that upper body and that lower body. So we're going to go one, two. Three. We're only doing ten of these. Four, five, six, seven, nine, and ten. Bring down those toes nice and light. You're gonna bring those hands on either side of you. You can always make like kind of like a little seat with your thumbs. And we're gonna lift those legs straight up. So I'm not super flexible. I will always have a bend in my legs. If you can do yours totally straight up, that is amazing, and like be super proud of it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna always have bent knees, it's just my body, I have to work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down about 10 times, and then we're gonna hold and freeze. So all over, we're gonna go one. And if you ever feel that lower body, that lower back lifting, then you know that you shouldn't go as far, and that's okay, that's not a sign of weakness, that's a sign of figuring out what your body can do, can and can't do with what muscle you have, and it's just gonna get stronger. So it's better that you kind of like mediate that lower back and work and focus on bringing that stomach than just like rocking back and forth because then you're not even building anything, you're just using momentum. We got two. Last one. And after this last one, we're gonna hold as low as you can for 20 seconds. Some people can go all the way down, right here, maybe you're up a little high, whatever it is that feels good for your body right now. That is a challenge and it is pushing it, just holding in that stomach, pushing down that lower back. You got five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it all the way up. We're gonna climb the rope, 10 on each side. So one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, almost there, nine, and ten. Bring it all the way down. You can hold onto those knees, rock side to side, relax that lower back, melt into it, breathe into it, and then come right up. So that was our core section. Our core section is really important to warm up first, I feel, in a bar class because you're gonna be using it and activating it the entire time. So it's really good that it's warmed up, good to go, activated those muscles, so then you can focus on keeping them nice and tight for the rest of these sections of class. So we're gonna go right into that glute work. So for our glute work, we got three different sections. We're gonna start with our hands and knees for one, then we're gonna be on our back for the second set, and then we're gonna be on our side for the third set, that like clam position. So in our tabletop position, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, you want to try to avoid like sticking that butt out, like you want to keep that core nice and tight, kind of like we did during all that core work. We are going to start on the right side. So if you do have sensitivity in that lower back and those wrists like I do, you can totally come down onto those forearms. Um, this is a totally great alternative position. It's just as equally a hard workout and you're going to feel it no matter what. It's just kind of listening to your body and those little points. So. When we're going to be lifting our right leg, we want to make sure we have pressure in that right arm, whether it's the hand or the elbow. So I always suggest like kind of tenting up or even like lifting that left arm forward because the last thing you want to do in these kind of positions for our glutes is like lean to one side because then you're not activating the right muscles. And you're, what your body is doing is it's like it's sneaky, it's like cheating on itself and you don't even realize it. It's just like a habit our body does. So. Pressure on that right arm, maybe let tent up that left hand. Then you're gonna flex that foot, you're gonna bring it up, and we're gonna do donkey kicks. We're gonna, not donkey kicks, we're gonna stamp up on the ceiling 20 times. One, two. So we're not going even that high. You really just wanna feel it right here. This isn't coming from our knee. 
This is coming from those powerful glutes. We're holding in that core nice and tight. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now we're gonna bring it all the way in. Option to come back up on those hands. We're gonna go right to where that knee is and straight up. Two, three, four, five, donkey kicks going straight in, activate those hamstrings, one, two, keep that foot nice and flexed, five, six, seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, now we're going to point those toes and poke, three, four, Five, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Then we're going to do the same thing coming in. One, two, option to take that arm straight. Three, four, five. going to do a nice light tap. So one, we're just going to do 10, two, you do not need to go up super high. You're just using those glute muscles. So you don't want to be like swinging really high, nice in control. Six, seven, eight. We're just going to hold and 10. Hold right here. Option to bring that left arm up. You got four. Three, two, and one. Lightly bring it down. Option to come into that child's pose, kind of just releasing those muscles. Giving yourself a little breather here. You can do two full breaths. Breathing in and out. Breathe in and out. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other leg. So, on those hands and knees, down to those elbows, you can alternate just like I did, really just listening to your body and what is a good out and a bad out, essentially. So you're going to lift that left leg up, flexing that foot, maybe tense up that right arm to make sure you're like nice and stable, not twisting from one side or the next. We're going to go up 20, 2, 3, 
two, one, bring it down or stay right where you are, flexing that foot, little kickbacks. One, two, 20 of these right here, four, And 20. Point those toes and straight up. We got two, three, four, you got five, four, three, two, and one. Going in those swings, one, pointed toes. Really feel that burn right there in the big part of that booty. Five, six, less than ten, seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Lifting straight up, coming down through those elbows, just staying right where you are, straightening that leg, pointing those toes still. We're going to do 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, First set's done, going into the second. And you go down onto our backs. We're going to do some hip lifts. So option, if you have those weights, you can hold those weights in your hands and hold them right here. You can lift those hands straight up, or you can keep your hands right down the bottom. You want to keep your heels and toes down. Always option to lift up on those heels if you feel a lot of pressure. I mean, lift up those toes. If you feel a lot of pressure on those knees that something doesn't feel right. And if you have a, a like squishy ball, you can put them right between your legs this whole time. It is a great way to keep those muscles stabilized and not going out of good form. So we're gonna go up for those push-ups. Now you don't need to go super high up. You just wanna be able to feel a fist right under you. And it's just a very slight pulse. So you don't need to like overextend, over arch that back. If you can go up super high naturally, that is awesome. That's perfect for you. But what you want to do is just nice little soft pulses, and you're going to tighten those glutes. You're going to tighten that core. You're going to lift up on those hips and just do 20 pulses. We got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We're going to go all the way down. 2, 1. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just 10 of these. Seven. You're gonna really start to feel a burn here in those glutes. Eight. Nine. And 10. So now here's a tricky thing. You're either gonna take that ankle, put it over your knee, or you're gonna lift it straight up. Does not matter. So taking that right foot, lifting it straight up, and just pulses. 10 of these right here. One. You're gonna really feel it burn in that leg that's laying down. <laughs> Eight, nine, and ten. Lightly drop that foot. Bring up the other ten pulses. One, two, three, four. Point those toes. Nine and ten. Bringing down both those feet. Just twenty right. There. Ten right here. One, two, three. Squeezing those glutes as you go up. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Bringing it down, maybe rocking a little bit side to side. Option to hold on to that little ball position, releasing those muscles. That's our second set done. We're already going into the third. So for our third set, I'm gonna kind of switch sides so I can still face you guys. But we're gonna lay on our right side. 
You can either like keep your head nice and tented up, which like I can never do, or you can like make a little pillow for yourself or keep that arm nice and straight. So we're gonna go into that clam position right here. You're not necessarily in a 90 degree angle. You're like a little bit lower. Knees are stacked, hips are stacked. I always put my hand on my hip because I wanna make sure I'm not rolling too back or too forward. You wanna be nice and straight towards that ground. So we're gonna start with our toes pointed and just lifting up our knees 20 times. So one, two, and you're gonna feel all on this side booty here. So we kind of did the main part, kind of did the crease of the butt, the glute, <laughs> we don't know all the technical terms, and now we're doing that side booty. So you got 10, nine, eight, seven, six. You can also option to put one of those like bands around you to make it like tighter. Nine, ten. So now we're gonna do knees to toes. So we're gonna go one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Almost there. Four, three, two, and one. So now we're gonna take our legs parallel and just go one, just 10 of these. Three, really starts to burn right there. Hold on to it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna straighten that leg, coming parallel to the bottom, to, um, the ground, we're just gonna do flex that foot, we're just gonna do little kicks. So one, and they're very small, very subtle, and you'll feel that booty tiny up immediately. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You got five, four, three, two, one. Now you're gonna point those toes, angle them in, Maybe come a little bit forward and just do 10 lifts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We just gotta hold 10. Hold it right here. We got five, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. Option to come onto that back. Give yourself a nice little figure four stretch, <laughs> like what's the word for that? And then when you're ready, we're gonna switch it out to the other side. You can either roll over, just kind of like switch out the way I am. Coming down on that left side, keeping those legs nice and parallel with each other, coming a little bit forward, but not a perfect 90 degree angle. You can rest that head on the ground, you can make a little pillow with your arm, or you can come straight up. Holding onto those hips to make sure you're not curving one way or the next. We're gonna go right into it, 20. So pointing those toes. We got five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're going to go knees to toes. So one, two, Got less than 10, nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one. Now parallel straight up, just 10. One, two, three, really starts to burn. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. When you're ready, you're gonna straighten that leg, flex that foot, little kicks. One, two, three, little bending kick. Nine, ten. We 
got five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna straight, <laughs> flex those toes, straight those toes, curve them in just a little, bring them forward, just 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and just hold 10 seconds right here. I know it burns, it burns me so much. We got five, four, three, two, and one. Lightly bringing it down. You can come onto your back, give yourself a nice figure four on each side if that feels good for you. Or just come in that child's pose. Never position, feels good for you. Now, lifting straight up, we are gonna go straight into that quad work. So, we have essentially, <laughs> situated, we have warmed up that core, we've warmed up those glutes, so now we have all those stabilizer muscles like really warmed up, burn through, building muscle, and now we go into those quads, those big legs that we use so much in spin class, we take a lot of spin at Epic Ride. Um, it is so important to strengthen all those little stabilizer muscles, because it's just gonna make those bigger muscles run so much smoother. So, we are gonna start in a 90 degree lunge, so double 90. Now, Again, I can't go down super low because I just have uh, injuries and some things going on with my body and my knees. So if you can go like super, super low, that is awesome. If you can't go that low, you need to go a little higher, that's okay. You just wanna make sure that this knee right here isn't going all the way over those toes. You wanna make sure it's right over the ankles and your left quad here, you can see straight down. So that helps you prevent you from going too far back. You do want that heel up real high and those toes super pointed, and that's how you get into that perfect 90 degree ankle. So we're just gonna double 90. So you can keep your hands here, you can keep on your hips, you can hold on to something if you need that stabilizer, which is totally cool. And we're just gonna do 20 straight up and down. So one, two, three, Almost there. At five, four, three, we're going into pulses next. Two, one, coming down to the double 90, just pulse. One, two, three. You feel yourself going forward, bring yourself right back. Got five, four, three, two, one. Now in this position, what we're going to do is you're going to take this knee and go straight in, and that's going to help build muscle in that inner thigh. So we just go in one, two, very subtle, not really dramatic, it's a teeny movement. We've got less than 10, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna lift up on those toes or you can stay on the heel the whole time and just pulse. Got less than 10 and we come right out of this. 11. You got four, three, two, and one. Straighten that leg, come out of it, shake it out. We're gonna go straight into that wide second as a transition before we go into that left side. So in that wide second, our feet are angled out, so we're not angled in, we're angled out. We're gonna come straight down. We wanna to try to get those knees as open as possible and not too far in. Just with my limited, my limited mobility, my body, I am gonna be a little angled in, so you wanna to try to get a little bit more out and you never wanna have those knees going over those toes. So straighten up. And then coming down, we're just gonna do 20 of those. So one, two. Option to take those hands and do it like that or just hold right where you are. You can put weights on your hips if you wanna add a little bit extra. You got five, four, three. I just realized I went straight into pulses. So we're just gonna continue these pulses here, another 10. Six, five, four, three, two, 
one, then we're gonna lift up on that right, on those right toes and just 20 pulses. So our goal is not to lean too far, but still to stay straight and grounded. Got 10. Got five, four, three, two, one. Switch it out. Lift up on that left toes, on those left toes. Keep pulsing. Got less than 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and while I'm bringing both feet down, we're just gonna do those straight up. One, two, three, four, five. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen and 20, and then coming down, we're gonna take those knees and push back. One, two. So it's very subtle, very light. You're gonna feel it in those glutes again. You got 10. Got five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it straight up and shake it out. We're gonna go into, so you can either turn and go straight to that left side, I'm gonna do it this way just because I think it's easier for what you guys are gonna see. So coming right back in to that double 90 degree angle, that perfect form, knee right over our ankle. You can see my quad right here in front of your hip, like parallel straight down. Hands on in prayer position on your hips, option to hold weights. You can hold on to something, whatever works for you. We're just gonna go 20 right here. Less than 10. You got five, four, three, two, one. Coming straight down 20 pulses. In that 90 degree, taking that right knee going in just a little. Two, three, four, five, six. You got four, three, two, and one. We're gonna lift up straight onto those toes and pull us down. You got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Drop that foot, shake it on out. <laughs> We're going to go into that chair pose right here. So if you are able to lean against something like a wall, of course I'm not going to be able to find anything. I'll like use this essentially. <laughs> but we're going to go into that chair pose for like 60 seconds, about 60 seconds. So when you're ready, coming right into it, let's see if we can do this. And the bike doesn't tilt over. All right, so we're going to do that chair pose against like a wall, anything like that. Sorry, I had to, I had to cut it and move because there's nowhere to go. <laughs> so you want to keep those knees and that booty nice and parallel. You can have your hands on your hips, you can have it in a prayer position, you can have it straight up. We're just gonna hold here for one minute. Just hold on to it, almost there. Realize I didn't time this, so I'm kind of guessing how long a minute. <laughs> Hold on to it. 
maybe changing up that arm position, maybe going straight up, maybe coming down to those hips. Whatever is your challenge and pushes you that extra little bit. Less than 10. Four, three, two, and one. You can bring yourself back up, kind of shake it out. Give yourself a moment. We're gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna see if I can get myself a timer. All right, we're on in four, three, two, and one. Bring it on down. Maybe you change up that hand position or just stay right where you are. You want to keep that back nice and flat against that wall. You don't want to try to arch at all. So holding that flat back and maintaining that perfect 90 degree angle is our biggest challenge. And then it's the burn and just staying through it. We're halfway there. Almost there. got five, four, three, two, and one. It may have been less than a minute, I'm just being honest. All right, I'm gonna switch you around for our arm set, last set. All right, so this is the really fun part where we get to use our makeshift weights, and I'm getting a little ridiculous, and this is another professional, but sometimes you gotta do what you just gotta do. So we're gonna start with that shoulder work. So for any arm work in any upper body, you always wanna make sure you have those hips kind of tilted, that core nice and tight, a little bit in those knees, feet are parallel. It's kind of how you have that powerful stance to protect that lower body while you're lifting these weights. You always want to avoid swinging or going too far or using momentum instead of muscle. It's all about that power and that weight. So we're going to start with shoulder work. Hands are going to be parallel. We're going to lift straight up 20 times. Let's go. One, two, and I know how ridiculous this looks, but <laughs> you do what you got to do. Now you want to keep those shoulders low. You don't want them crunching up to your ears. And if at any point it feels like it's you're going too high up, you can always stop a little lower. So we're at 12, 13. You've got five, four. We're going to open up wide in two and one. So while we're rolling down, opening up wide. Oops, see what's going to happen? We got one, two. And you want to keep those shoulder blades as if they're like kissing, like those back shoulder blades are kissing. Those shoulders are nice and low, and you're, you might have a little micro bend in those elbows. So you got less than 10. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Now we're going to go straight into that cheerleader stretch. So it's going to go one, lifting straight up, and onto that next side, straight up. So then two, straight up, three, got four. We're only doing 10 of these, that's it. Bend in those knees. Seven. I know they feel like they're never going to end, but I promise that they will. <laughs> Eight. We are so close. Nine. One more after this. And ten. So we're going to take our elbows, go parallel to our, our face, try to get those elbows as close as possible, and we're just going to do little lifts. 20 lifts right here. Don't forget to breathe. We always hold our breath in like super tight. We're doing arm work. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we're gonna bring in those elbows to kiss. Three, four, 
maybe holding those top weights together. These always like burn so hard for me. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And we're going to go into that angled muscle man and just lift. 2, just 10 of these. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then coming into that muscle man, 20, just pulses. Keeping those shoulders nice and relaxed. Four, five. Hands are nice and light. Try not to hold on for dear life. Just like in spin. Eight, seven, six. We're gonna lift all the way up to finish out. Just 10. Four, three, two, one. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten bring it on all the way down kind of give yourself a few roll up a little shake out we're going to go right into those posture muscles so for those posture muscles we're going to start with scarecrow you want to have a bend in those knees you want to flat back you want that core in nice and tight and you want the shoulders relaxed you want to stay looking forward you don't want to twist your head in any way just stay nice and static and we're going to switch each time so we got it one two We got pulses up next. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And hold it back. Just pulse. So you're really pulsing through those shoulder blades. You're not using those elbows. You're not using those hands. Just pulsing back. Got ten, nine, eight. We're gonna go straight into rows after this. Four, three, two, one. Now for those rows, they're gonna be nice narrow rows. We're gonna go one, two, three. Remember holding those shoulder blades nice and tight, like you're holding like a pencil in between them, or like squeezing an orange to make orange juice. I've heard so many different things. So every three, you got 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. We're gonna pull snacks, two, holding it back and just pulse right in those shoulder blades, squeezing that orange, making that orange juice for maybe a nice mimosa later. <laughs> Two. You got 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. We're gonna go right into those triceps. Two and one. So for our tricep kickbacks, we're gonna go all the way back and try to stop right here. We're not gonna go all the way up for that bicep crunch because we're doing biceps next. So just one. Two. Nice and strong. That resistance to stop there, especially if you're holding something with liquid in it, like I am, <laughs> definitely adds a little bit of an extra challenge. We got nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, holding it straight back, little lift, straight hands, I mean straight arms. <laughs> you take my spin class, I tend to mix up words all the time. It's like just the same everywhere. It's just my life. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We're going to do a little bend and press next. 2, 1, little bend and press. Bend and press. You can totally speed these up or just go nice and slow. Four. We're just gonna do 10, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we're gonna flip those weights up and lift. Ten, nine, eight, seven. We're gonna go in next. Four, three, two, one, and in. Two, three. Four, five, six. And we're gonna do a combo. Eight, nine, ten. So we lift and in. Lift and three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, last one, nine, sorry, one more, <laughs> 10, and lift it straight up. Shake out those shoulders, give yourself a few rolls, bring it right into those biceps. So for an extra challenge with biceps, you can always lift a little bit further from the body, just try not to angle forward. So because these are like not that heavy-ish, <laughs> I'm just gonna do it straight forward. We're gonna go to hammer curls and then we're gonna open all the way up. So let's go one. Trying not to curve those arms in when you come, those wrists in when you come in, just lifting straight up from those biceps. Sometimes these little moves are very minimal weights and just as equal of a workout as if you were holding like 20 pound weights. It's just focusing on those muscles, like really separating that focus just on those biceps. You got eight, seven, six, five, three, two, one. Switch out for hammer curls, 20 sets. We're almost there. This is our last set of the entire class, this section. We're gonna finish with push-ups and that's it. Four, three, two, one. And then opening up nice and wide into that bicep, maybe lifting a little bit away from that body. We just do 20. Then we're gonna do 20 pulses and that's it with our canned weights. <laughs> using our hands, we're pulsing from those biceps. We've got 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Bringing down those weights, maybe give yourself a few swings, <laughs> loosen it all up. We're going to go into those push-ups, and for those push-ups, we can either do it so you can always do them on your knees. If you do do them on your knees, you always want to make sure that you're not sticking that butt out, but you're maintaining that straight line. When you're going down, your whole body is going down with you. Now you can either do tricep push-ups or you can do the wide push-ups. I'm going to do tri the wider push-ups because that tricep push-ups doesn't work for my body, but you have the option to switch out of these. We're going to do two different sets, 10. That's it. You can do it on a table. You can do it against the wall. If going straight on the ground is not good for you, just want to maintain that straight line, that like plank pose, that perfect plank pose. If you are doing those wider push-ups, you kind of want like just your thumbs on the mat and the rest of your hands off the mat. So it's like nice and wide and you're not like curving in too much and like sticking out those elbows. So we're going to just do 10. Without five, four, three, two, and one. Option to come into that downward facing dog or just coming into that child's pose, whichever feels good for you. We're gonna do that one more time, just 10, that's it. Wide, forearms, on the knees, on the table, against the wall, whatever it is that works for your body. Let's go, one. Two, three, seven, eight, nine, and ten. <laughs> I was definitely struggling that last one. <laughs> Coming down to that child's pose and just letting it all go. Melting into that ground. Give you a little bit of stretching together. So coming into that hands and knees position, just a few cat cows, lifting straight up, arching that back, and bringing it in, curving that back, dropping that head. 
You can do any kind of variation of this. If you want to twist from side to side, if you want to come into a downward dog, whatever feels good for you. We're just kind of nurturing that lower body, that back, for all that hard work and great work you just did. And when you're ready, you can come on back down to that booty. We're just going to stretch out, putting in that left leg, that left foot, and stretching out that right foot. You want to lift straight up, kind of look up, lean into it, and then turn forward, melting right into it. If you can't touch your toes, hold on to those shins, quads, whatever you can reach, just melt right into it. Four, three, two, and one. When you're ready, switch it on out, opposite side, taking that left arm, shin, toes, whatever feels good. Lifting straight up, looking up, and then going forward parallel to that knee and melting right into it. And when you're ready, taking both feet out nice and straight. Now, a decent amount of people, I definitely can't, can go straight down without bending their knees. I always need a little bend in my knees, or if I keep them straight, I just don't go that far. But it is a great back release when you do this kind of stretch. So, lifting straight up. Flexing those feet, hinging forward, melting into it, letting everything kind of get really heavy. About four, two, and one. We're going to finish up here with downward dog, some lunges, three big breaths, and we are all set. Stretching is super important. I know because it doesn't feel like as much of a workout, it's easy to be like, oh, okay, I'm done. But like, stretching is so important for our bodies, especially because we just triggered all those teeny little muscles that can get super tight afterwards. So coming into that downward dog, we have a nice little bend in those knees if you need it. You wanna push that booty all the way back. Then lifting up straight through that right foot. You can even open up your dog, whatever feels good, but coming in between those hands, Dropping that knee and kind of just melting a little bit forward. Giving yourself a few pulses and then taking that right foot, moving out to the right, maybe even curling on the outside of those toes and coming to that lizard pose, that hip opener. Option to come down to those elbows and just not that flexible. You can hear my dogs crying because they want to come out. <laughs> and now when you're ready, bringing that foot all the way down to that open pigeon. Again, you can either come all the way down to those elbows or stay straight up on those hands. Our goal is to keep this hip straight down and not to curve. We just want to open up those hips. They're going to get super tight after we did all that booty work. When you're ready, coming onto those left toes, bringing it back, coming back to that downward dog, switching it up <laughs> to the other side. I am so freaking clumsy. <laughs> bringing that foot forward. And then when you're ready, just kind of like, melting into it, opening up, you really feel it on that thigh, and then coming open onto that outer left foot <laughs> in that lizard pose, and coming right down into it. And when you're ready, opening it all the way up into that pigeon. Option to come all the way down to those elbows, even melting down further. Whatever feels good for you. My hips are super tight today, so I'm just going to stay straight up on my hands. When you're ready, come on up to those right toes, bring it on back, down into that downward dog. Breathing in and out. When you're ready, bring your hands to your toes, toes to hands. Give yourself a nice ragdoll pose. Holding out to opposite elbow, hold or hand straight to the ground. Option to go all the way back. I'm just going to do a nice ragdoll right here. And with a little bend in those knees, softly coming all the way up, lifting straight up. We're just going to do three breaths, closing double bounce. You need it, so breathing in, coming down into that prayer position, and then doing it again. Breathing in, coming into that prayer position. Sorry, you're my dog. And then one more time, maybe a little double bounce all the way up, lifting straight up and down in that prayer position. And that is it. I know my dog's out. Hey, is that you too? So, hey, say bye. Thank you so much for tuning into this. If
you have any questions, the, I'm sorry, I just realized that one of them destroyed one of my pets. <laughs> if you have any questions or need help with any of these positions, just feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram handle. handle. Thank you so much. Have a safe quarantine. <laughs> and thanks.